uh, hello everyone so it's two o'clock right now uh, and uh, let's wait for another five minutes i would say we have 22 participants right now and uh, uh, hope uh, i would request everyone to who has just joined in to introduce themselves on the chat window and yeah let's wait for a little while I hope everybody is able to see Nupur's screen. Yeah, that's good.
Ajha, one question when I uh, like suppose I open the chat while I'm on Zoom, can you see that I've opened the chat? Mm, I don't think so. Like right now, can you what can you see right now? I'm seeing your uh, your presentation. Okay, cheek. Yeah. Uh, so we will start at 2.10. Cool. Uh, for all the newcomers, uh, so we have done a round of introduction on the chat window. Uh, could you please uh, introduce yourselves in the chat window there, please? Your, just your name and uh, your institution. Thank you. Uh, Ahitesham, could you please uh, switch off your mic and your video? Uh, also, SBAN 575, could you in please introduce yourself? All right, so it's 2.10 now, and uh, SBN575 refuses to introduce themselves. That's fine. Uh, but uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session of Zoom Demic. Uh, I'm Vyom. I'm from IIT. I've been an alumni. Uh, I did my master's from JNU. And uh, uh, so today's talk is by Nupur Rashal. Uh, uh, and the title of her talk is Closest Conjunct Agreement in Hindi-Urdu. Uh, 
Uh, she will be taking uh, uh, Nupur. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. So uh, you will be taking questions. Uh, you're fine with questions in the middle, right? Uh, yeah, I'm talk. okay with questions. Yeah. yeah. So, so just uh, flag them to me. Exactly. So uh, the uh, format will be that, you, uh, as everybody knows who has attended, that uh, you can raise your hand or you can type your question in the group chat. And uh, as the time comes, I will direct them to Nupur. Uh, so uh, Nupur, it's all up to you now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank. It's uh, like I'm so happy all of you have joined. I have a lot of friends from other centers and from not the university who've come. So I'm like especially overwhelmed. So thank you, everyone. Uh, so my topic is closest conjunct agreement in Hindi and Urdu. So before we move on, I would like to get um, some grammaticality judgments from uh, people who speak Hindi and you can either like raise your hands and answer or you can just type what your judgment is in the chat window. Okay. So this was supposed to be a PPT but Zoom did a weird thing so I have to like do this weird scrolling thing now. Okay. How would you uh, fill in the blanks here? Uh, so people have typed Dikhi. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nazar I. Nazar I. Dikhai bhi. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So the next one is Zainab ko aad subay ek kawa aur ek chil. Dikhe, Dikhai Diye, Dikhai Diya, Dikhai Di Padi, Dikhe. Nazar Ai. Nazar Ai. Dikha. Dikha also, okay, nice. Dikhe. Okay, one final one. Naresh ke haath se katora aur chammach to blank, lekin thali nahi giri. Gir gaye, gire, giri. Giri. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So mostly people, like a lot of people are saying, gire, chut gaye. Yeah. Giri. Okay. So... I don't know if you've noticed, but with the first example, there was a like consensus with how the agreement happens. Second, it wasn't so consistent. Like while I think most people chose gire, yeah. but a lot dikhe. And some of them were saying dikhi, dikha. Yeah. And in the final one again, I think more people seem to say gire then giri yeah. okay so that okay so we like hold on to these judgments and i will come back to this in a bit okay so now my topic is closest conjunct agreement so now what exactly is agreement so agreement is basically something it's one thing whose information gets carried on to a different thing so the girna itself doesn't have anything. The value it's getting is from the nouns before that. So, um, so the valuation of the nouns take place with respect to gender, number, and person. So these things can, like if I said me, jaungi, and things like that. So these are the three ways where it, uh, the way the three ways in which agreement takes place. Okay. So now, like, we'll do a little bit slightly more um, formal understanding of what it is. So, according to Ken Kuhneman and Zayostra, they say that five, five features on NPs are interpretable, which is that they are semantically active. We will go with this for now, although it 
uh, we will revise this in some time. So what that means is that if a noun phrase has a feature, that means something. Okay, but if it's verbs, then these things don't actually mean anything. They're only, it's only about agreement. It is something that has to agree with the nouns for it to mean anything. So they are considered uninterpretable. This is with verbs and with adjectives in Hindi. Okay, so they say that if there is an in uninterpretable feature, then there must also be a matching interpretable feature in the same phrase. So uh, what this means is that if, if there is like a gilgay, then there must be something before that or in the same phrase which matches with it. Otherwise, it will not be a grammatical sentence. Okay. They also tie in this theoretical formulation with case licensing. Again, we will go with all of this for now. Okay. So now we will look at agreement in Hindi and Urdu. So in English, for example, uh, agreement is more, st uh, more or less straightforward because there is there's only a subject verb agreement. There isn't any other kind of agreement available. But in a language like Hindi or Urdu, uh, you, uh, a noun can agree with the subject or it can agree with the object. So first you can say Adil, Adil Chappal Kharide Da. And the second is Adil Ne Chappal Kharidi. So the Kharid can agree with the subject or with the object. And then Hindi Urdu also has this default agreement. Larko Ne Chappal Ko Kharida. So the Kharida is not actually agreeing with anything that precedes it. Okay, so when you include conjunctions to the mix, the story gets a little more weird. Okay, so when there is subject agreement, Ram or Adil, Chana Khate, hai. Ram and Adil eat chickpeas. Uh, it's fairly, the Khate, it's fairly um, obvious why there's a plural agreement over here. Uh, because there are two people who are doing the eating, right? So now the judgments that you give in the beginning, that kind of makes, like now you know where I'm going with that. When you look at the second example, uh, Priya ne chini or chana khaya tha. Or you can say Priya ne chana or chini khai thi. So you can, so uh, there is a lot of, there isn't a lot of consensus as to how agreement should work in the object position when there are conjunctions. Uh, so like a lot of you, most of you in fact give uh, uh, resolved agreement, which is like plural agreement, but some of you also said giri, or you know, they, you agreed with the feminine noun that was closest to the verb. So we'll, explain that so then you have to basically look at what uh, what the structure of conjunctions is like so earlier people used to think it's like a flat structure uh, where x and y they're all they're the same hierarchically but now uh, with good evidence people believe that it's a standard x bar representation so johannesson worked on head initial languages hindi is a head final language so in head initial languages, she says that the first conjunct is in the specifier position, which is structurally higher. And the second conjunct and the conjunction form a cons like constituent. And the second one is uh, the complement to the conjunction. And um, she didn't actually look at how it would work in head final languages, but she assumed that it's going to be the the inverse of it obviously so the first conjunct and the conjunction would form a constituent and the second conjunct is in the specifier uh, in head final languages so uh, do you, does anyone want to take a guess as to whether this seems correct the second conjunct the head final languages There hasn't been any response to that's now. fine that's fine so because i asked this i'm sure you know that that's not actually the case 
and so the structure of coordination in hindi is it's expected to be head final because hindi is a head final language but that isn't actually the case and there are other kinds of phrases which are head initial as opposed to everything being head final and these are examples of that so now i will show you why hindi the conjunction structure is head initial so first is har ladka aur uski ka dost bazar gaya so the har ladka binds the uska dost and not it you can't actually flip it around so if it were the second conjunct that was making the constituent then this would not be the case this is like a more interesting example which will show you better uh john ne kal ek kitab aur ek magazine khareedi so you can extrapose john ne kal ek kitab khareedi aur ek magazine so that basically says that the ek the first conjunct is in the specifier position and or ek magazine are like they they form constituents and if that if it weren't the case if it were the other way around then it was john ne the ki is basically tracy which ppt has messed this up uh john ne kal ek magazine kharide ek kitab aur is not actually correct and you can't do john ne kal ek kitab aur kharide ek magazine these are not so what this shows is that the ek kitab first conjunct is in the specifier position so it is structurally higher up okay so there's this other one with intonation so that's meal so gaya aur usne kapde bhi nahi badle as opposed to meal so gaya aur usne kapde bhi nahi badle okay so so basically um this started with me reading about closes conjunct agreement and it was from uh but and valco and but and can you ex plain extra position okay uh so um shubham uh so just look uh, okay first look at the trees okay can you keep this in memory so ek ek kitab is x here or ek magazine is y in the first case right uh so if ek kitab khareedi or ek magazine so can i do this one second so uh, how do i do this uh no no this i'm basically diagnosing the head head structure and this is it basically goes to show that it is a head initial structure and not a head final structure uh so uh sorry a, the first conjunct is a kitab the second conjunct is magazine okay so if it were a head final then a kitab or would be a constituent as you can see in the lower tree right and the a magazine would be in the second this x position so then you could like these are the constituents that you could move around the co bar but that's actually not the case what we find is what is happening in the first tree like you can the first conjunct is the thing uh that you can move around and the second the second conjunct and the conjunction are the constituents uh, uh is that clear shubham yeah so basically like these are different tests that show that while hindi is a head final language it's the structure of conjunctions is head initial so the first conjunct is structurally higher than the second conjunct uh, no 
for just one minute uh, yes. so at this point does anyone have any questions you can ask them now if not then let's move forward yeah 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 i'm making sense like this you're talking to <laughs> no no you are doing uh, fine yeah. okay okay cool so so then basically no, we can I just say probably, uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, i just want to say that maybe some first years don't know um, um, what uh, constituent structure is but so you could just ask some somebody to maybe anupama can say whether she knows or anybody who doesn't know what we mean by constituent structure etc if you could just do a little description um, about it or we could all collaborate do people understand what constituent structure is uh you can type it in the chat box or something uh constituent structure constituency so i'll i'll write a little explanation about what constituency is while no put carries on right all right yeah so basically so the paper that i read initially said that um in the object position closest conjunct agreement is obligatory okay and because when you read it your mind gets influenced so i was like yeah maybe that makes sense but then you know like i did like a basic just ask around and that was not actually the case so then i decided that we will look at this at like you know a little slightly more in detail okay so then what i did was i had a, a grammaticality task so it was so like the examples you did in the beginning the test that we did we had like a series of those on google forms and what i did was i typed the question there was a blank then i gave people four options which was masculine singular feminine singular feminine plural masculine plural so they could choose any one of them and they could choose more than one option like if they think that giri and gire are both grammatical i that was also okay um if yeah if you, if people didn't want to answer they could skip questions and uh if people thought that a sentence was completely gram ungrammatical and it was completely wrong then i asked them to like you know they were allowed to flag that also okay so hindi is an sov language more or less and scrambling a fair bit of scrambling is allowed right uh, so there were some sentences where so these were the sentences i asked for and so if if cca is obligatory then like in the first sentence adil ne takia aur chadar the answer should consistently be kharidi but you can see that in the little table at the bottom that not a lot of people opted for that so i had 59 participants and everyone could like they could pick more than one option and they could so blank out so these numbers don't always add up to 59 can be more can be less so about 10 people out of 59 opted for cca but a lot of people did masculine plural which kind of also makes sense because that's resolved agreement there's two things and if you resolve it then it becomes masculine gender and there's uh, a plural masculine that makes sense but then there was also a masculine singular so masculine singular is masculine singular agreement and it's also the default agreement as we saw in the earlier as i showed you in an earlier slide so you don't know whether this is default or whether this is masculine singular so uh, at this point i i feel like that might be default but i could be wrong uh, so the second is ek kami so i put a determiner there so then that made it 
more like that made people more uh, willing to agree with one single uh, conjunct. Uh, so the third was Bilnia, which is like a uh, so L is last conjunct agreement. So you expect the last conjunct here, which, which is the closest conjunct. So also like the thing is, this is not actually highest conjunct agreement. Uh, so, so you can just like take a look at, so like um, in the fourth example, takia or kursiya kharidi. So there's like a plural there. So again, when there's a plural, people again are more likely to agree. The fourth one is also plural. So people are more likely to do that. Uh, so basically like when you, when there's like a bare uh, NP, feminine singular, not a lot of people are, but it's an option. Like it's not, like it's not an option. Okay. So when you do masculine agreement, so I didn't like, I feel like the test for it being the correct agreement, uh, what is actually going on would be to have the feminine, but uh, you just test for masculine agreement. And here that you see, uh, jhola, juta, jhola. These are like singular, uh, bare singular masculine nouns. There again, I think people are more likely to agree with the closest conjunct. Do you expect a correlation? Okay, I will get to it. Kinjal. Okay, so now leading into the question is first conjunct environment. So in Hindi, you can scramble. So also scrambling can also change the facts of this, right? So Zoya ne da kharidi kharide churi or chuta. So again, it's about the same. It's not like it. So ten people. Uh, there was like a correlation. Like ten people agreed with feminine singular in the last conjunct and in the first conjunct environment, eleven people did. Zoya uh, ne. Churia, so feminine plural. Again, more people are likely to agree with a uh, plural. Then finally, Ramne, Harida, Sutakia, which is masculine singular. Here it's not as prevalent as it is in the last conjunct agreement. Okay, and so like then you test for uh, linear distance. So that's linear, like absolutely close. So so this was actually not something I uh, tested for. I was only looking at scrambling. So I did not put a lot of intervening things. So when I work on it further, this is actually something I have to test for properly. Like this is not uh, a very good uh, example of linear distance but again you can see that it sort of does make a difference because but like minute not not a lot okay determiner so when you look at the table here when there's masculine singular plus feminine singular 10 people but when there's a masculine singular plus a determiner and then 21 people opted for this. Uh, see again, masculine, singular, feminine, singular, 10 people. When there's a determinant in both masculine and feminine, more people opted for that. Okay. Then again, similarly with plurals, like here you can see when there's a feminine plural, you can see in the table at, at the bottom, like lots of, lots, a lot more people have decided to agree with the CCA. Okay. Uh, are there any questions at this point? Uh, you can type them in the chat box 
as is the option yeah no go go okay. ahead yeah so basically the thing is it's so there isn't cca isn't an obligatory thing by a long mile so that is clearly not how these things work but cca exists there is an option there are certain things that make uh it likelier to be chosen such as determiners and plurals and linear distance and all of that but so we don't i don't actually have like a nice neat explanation for why this is the case yet so these are some of the observations that happen so cca is not obligatory at all by a long mile uh when there is a conjunction in the subject position people use uh are there other known cases where uh i don't know about that sakshi i have not looked at that any details so in the subject position resolved agreement is quite consistent like everyone was doing masculine plural all the time but in the object position it's very very whimsical and there isn't uh any generalization you can make from that then there is no highest conjunct agreement so it's not it won't agree with the first conjunct just because it is closest the first conjunct is closest to the verb it will happen if it's linearly close okay agreement with masculine is like masculine nouns is more readily that happens more readily than with uh feminine but that's also because this antilla made a generalization which said that um uh, if like more than one thing leads to the same surface structure then that is more likely to be numerically represented which makes sense so like the masculine agreement is the default agreement as well as the cca agreement okay and then i also one thing i noticed was that um it, there was intra individual variation so people would pick cca in one instance and they would do resolved uh, agreement later and there was no actual pattern in why they were doing it it was not uh, or i ha actually haven't uh, tested for it whether there is a system behind it but the same people were using different strategies in different sentences okay uh again agreement cca becomes likelier with plurals determiners kind of lead your distance although that is not um, something i've uh, explicitly tested for okay a default agreement is not actually the last resort in conjunctions in fact it appears that default is often uh, preferred over cca with a bare singular feminine okay so what do we do with this so i don't actually have an answer to that so it means that maybe we haven't actually i haven't actually looked at certain things closely enough so is it something to do with the features of the conjunct phrase like is that is that something we missed out on like because it it does make make sense because on the one hand you do think that the conjunct phrase would be a plural but also like what what gender feature should percolate up to it what so that is not something uh, i have looked at yet and i ought to to get a better explanation for that uh and also five features right like in the beginning um uh, it was said that on nouns five features are semantically motivated now we know for a fact that that is not actually the case in hindi or urdu because inanimate nouns have gender and that's not semantically motivated it's quite arbitrary in, in fact um it's it's just one of those things that if you know you know if you don't you don't like you someone has to tell you this so there is no semantic motivation to the gender feature especially so then is it is it an interpretable feature right so then do we make a distinction between grammatical gender and semantic gender okay uh also in the 
so the the one thing sorry i i didn't mention with hindi is uh, in the subject position agreement can be with person number and gender in the object position uh, agreement is with uh, number and gender only and not with person but also uh, first and second person in the object always gets marked with ko uh, if you want to think of like counter examples you can please let me know because i actually have not been able to find uh, like object uh, sentences with an object that don't have a ko in first and second person right and also like if the object has like is is a human then if you just say like maine uh vyom dekha that does not so i i would have to say many of you yeah go, and come an object yeah so like so there are so there are counter examples many ladka dekha mujhe dulhan mili but i mean exactly yeah so actually as a question yeah so one second have you looked for pattern in your meaning based on the variety uh i have not actually looked for those so that again is something i have to like figure out properly because um the way i did it was it was people who self identified as hindi urdu speakers so i didn't uh, make a dis- difference between uh, regions at all but uh, so the thing is uh, i also tested for their like what uh, the the gender they assign to one noun without a conjunction and that was pretty uh, consistent so like you know takia was masculine for everyone across the board or chap was feminine okay. did i notice uh yet which is something i have to do so these are all like so I, basically i have i did like a basic test and then i ended up with more questions and answers and now you have to basically like fine tune the thing and you have to find like you know get like you have to be able to explain why these things are happening and i haven't actually okay so what now uh So and also like one more thing that I didn't do was actually I looked at only object agreement with nouns that were actual things. So I've not looked at uh, sentences like "maine dono gham aur kushi." Do you okay? Why don't you guys give me a grammatical quality judgment on this? "Maine dono gham aur kushi dekhiye, dekhiye." Feminine singular. Okay. What does everyone else think? देखे फैसिस्ट देखे देखे फैसिस्ट देखी देखे देखी 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 एंड देखे देखी सीम फाइन फॉर मी हाँ सी दैट सो ओके सो लाइक फ्रॉम from the looks of it there it doesn't quite make a difference whether like the abstraction maybe there is a lot mm. of inconsistency and there isn't a lot of uh, consensus on how we should be so then is it just is it just processing is this just how you process a sentence uh i i maybe not because uh because the way i did the the questions were posed was because people could take as much time as they could they could choose multiple yeah. options so this is not so like this data does not indicate to uh this variation being about processing okay so or, or you can just be like you like you know agreement happens in the syntax and the spell out happens and then whatever and so is that basically is that a cop out so i i don't i don't know yet so but yeah so these are like the ways in which you would 
I would have to fine tune what I've found that this mess of our data. And yeah, that's that's that. Okay, that is it. <laughs> okay, questions. Yes. Um, I had Thank a you. comment. Huh? Yeah. So I was thinking this um, third person agreement, that is default agreement. I uh, I think it's a variety thing from what I have noticed around my friends. Because mm -hmm. um, for me, this is a very robust judgment. In the previous example that you gave, I have seen a lot of or gum. I would never mm -hmm. use "dekhi hai" or "dekha hai." You, so for you, "dekha hai" is also incorrect. Yeah, it has to be okay. "dekhi hai." Um, so I think it, 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 you, you should check for varieties because I have also noticed that yeah. this sort of agreement varies over people, and especially I've seen a lot of third-person agreement coming from maybe some Eastern varieties. Hmm. But if there was like, uh, uh, so what I did with the uh, earlier examples was I checked for the actual nouns and whether they were like masculine or feminine and how they changed when there was a conjunction added. But yes, okay. yeah. Like uh, so I, I, yeah, before anyone else, like because my question is related to Sakshi's question. Huh. So uh, if, uh, as you're saying, right, we, right now do not know whether this is a sin something happening in the syntax or something because of processing or something so yeah. uh, or is it like it's a pa phenomenon so uh, basing it on the fact that uh, these judgments have some ground in uh, the varieties right so it's hmm. like eastern hindi variety versus western yeah. hindi variety as a difference that would actually make a substantial case for uh, like whatever the general findings are, right? Of, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, for the grammar. Yeah. But also the thing is like, uh, the thing that actually baffled me was I could have like, because I also asked for where they're from. Mm. And so I was looking for that. Uh, but also like I found that people, the same yes. person was making like different yes. judgments yeah. in different <laughs> environments. So, so yeah. They, yeah, so you have to. I, I have to basically fine tune what I'm looking for and ask yeah. uh, better questions. Yeah. So Shubham has a question. Huh. Huh. Uh, can you see? How is linear effect uh, different? Oh, pick a speak. Oh, sorry. Uh, how is linear effect different from scrambling? Uh, so uh, in these examples, it's not actually clear. Shubham, you're right. Because I was not, uh, I did not explicitly test for linear distance. Uh, because linear distance would basically be Zoya, Ne, Churi, or Juta, or Churiya, Bazaar, Jake, uh, something, 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 Karke, Karida, Karidi, Karida. So there's like, there's a lot of intervening things between the uh, noun and the Thing that the agreement has to happen on. So yes, you well spotted. Okay, Sakshi will volunteer and give me judgment on each of the examples. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, Adil ne takia or chadar? Um, Haride. But yeah. <laughs> but now you'll make it like uniform because no no I, I will so okay I here see. I can okay. also accept Kharidu huh. but I would rather no, use Kharidu okay Adil ne kuch jhole or ek kameez Kharidu Ram ne kutte or bilnia dekhi dekhi Ram ne takia or kursiya Ram ne ek takia or kursiya. Haridi. Sakshi a little so, louder. Huh, okay, huh. sorry, sorry, sorry. Actually, yeah. my yeah. Huh. So it's me. This is also thoda sa messed up because in the experiment, like everything was jumbled and there was like other stuff. So now you also like know. But anyway, it's still fun. Ram ne ek takia or kuch kursiya. Haridi. Adil ne kafi sari kameeze aur ek jhola. Kameeze aur ek jhola. 
खरीदा जोया ने चूड़ी और जूता मेरे सामने घड़ी पेन बोतल यही सब चीजें बिस्किट चूड़ी और बिस्किट आदिल ने कमीज और झोला आदिल ने कमीजे और झोला कमीज और झोला पहले आदिल ने कमीज और झोला खरीदा आदिल ने कमीजे और एक झोला एक झोला खरीदा कुछ कमीजे और एक झोला खरीदा ओके जोया ने ब्लैंक चूड़ी और जूते खरीदे जोया ने ब्लैंक चूड़िया और जूते खरीदे और खरीदी खरीदी ओके ब्लैंक तकिया और कुर्सियां खरीदे और खरीदे खरीदे ओके आदिल ने ब्लैंक तकिया और चादर खरीदे चूड़ी जूता हो गया चूड़िया जूते हो गया चूड़ी जूता चूड़ी जूता हो गया जोया को अब वो मतलब रिकॉर्डिंग से आई विल राइट इट डाउन जोया को तकिया और चादर दिया गया दी गई दिए गए जोया को तकिया और चादर दिए गए जोया को तकिया और एक चादर दी गई आदिल ने तकिया और चादर खरीदे कुछ झोले और एक कमीज ये सब भी किए हुए आई थिंक वी हैव डन ऑल दिस कुत्ते और ओके कुत्ते बिल्ली कुत्ते बिल्ली हां राम ने कुत्ते और बिल्लियां राम ने कुत्ते और बिल्लियां देखी राम ने कुत्ते और बिल्लियां ओके राम ने तकिया और कुर्सियां खरीदी राम ने एक तकिया और कुर्सियां ये भी करना है या रहने दें I am doing a lot more closes content. Okay, uh, just uh, so uh, Kindle had a uh, comment to make here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. Kindle, you can unmute yourself and. Yeah. So, so now this is so I think this is very interesting that you find this. Um, uh, I mean, the fact that resolve agreement is not the only option, and I was wondering, um, what if you like make a context and then. uh um you know have a wh question and and then see mm. how, how things go about because people um, especially because there are both the options available mm. uh, so what i'm alluding to is what if there are any inf- information structural effects happening there might not be but it's worth testing yeah 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 absolutely so uh, 
before I did the questionnaire, I was also like asking people around me, like my friends and my family about things. So my initial uh, way of trying to get data was actually like I would ask them questions and I would tell them to uh, give me answers. And so if I would say like, kya kya kharida, if that is how I would ask the question, they would always like uh, try to answer it in like masculine singular that they would all for some reason that was happening so i was not actually able to get um, so yeah but yeah. like there is so, a point yeah so, so like so like but so what you could what works here what might work here is what if you like give options like give questions yeah. and then and then options to to pick from um yeah and and then you might get what you yeah yeah that's yeah yeah worth just, looking just, at just control for random answers um, yeah true yeah i should look at that they <laughs> knew yeah they knew question yeah that's what, and also the thing is but uh, once you know what one is looking for then your judgments go out of the window because i was but when i read that CCA is obligatory in my head. I started doing obligatory CCA all the time. Yeah, but no, but exactly yeah. when I did your experiment, uh, I knew what I was doing, but my yeah, I was like trying to be true to my grammatical judgment when I was trying, but like it still came out all random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so basically, yeah, this is a problem and one has to figure out what to make of this kind of like how how one can like whether there's a generalization to be made so you have to test for different factors and yeah that is that yeah so i also don't know where i'm doing in what particular why i'm doing a resolved agreement and where because khushi and dum to i'm sure i'll do a resolved agreement there so i don't know huh. <laughs> huh. but like i could uh, i am i haven't like made note of everything you said but again thoda like when there was a plural or when there was a determiner you were likelier to do cca but again like i'm not going to okay so are there yeah, yeah. so anjali has a question so i have to test it oh the comment Yeah, for generations. Natural I think it means age. Ah. I Aisha yeah. would want like to comment. Yeah, I should yeah. also look at that. Oh. So, Logan, I think something that you said uh, was very interesting, and I've not thought of that uh, before, which I am. I mean, in the sense that I hadn't dwelt on you, said it in your synopsis, but I hadn't uh, dwelt on it. I mean, so if we are looking at um, the structure of the conjunct phrase, so there are some contexts where you get this agreement uh, indeterminacy, right? Or you get more options on the table. Otherwise, Hindi is a pretty, so why people, all Hindi speakers are saying with great uh, self-belief that this is how they would do it. It's because that's hmm. the way that, you know, in this dumb class language with this um, uh, grammatical patterns of agreement takes us, right? You know, it wants us, we form rules. We know that the agreement is done by rule. But yeah. your question that, uh, so we have that authority, but there seem to be zones. So Tanmoy Bhattacharya's work on participant agreement, then I, Anup and Rajesh Bhatt, I think at least three Hindi speakers who's uh, and I think we're exactly the same variety um, uh, when it comes to um, uh, uh, agreement. We're all Delhi, Mufasal, UP, um, um, and we all gave the same pattern of intra um, speaker variation and um, inter speaker variation. So it's <laughs> because sometimes you just don't know what's right. And in the participial cases, which is a yeah. slightly a, heavier chunk than your conjunct. We see yeah. the same uh, indeterminacy and I think there'll be in other areas of the grammar as well. 
Now, you're right in that um, we, uh, when you say that we should think of what the structures of a conjunction phrase uh, hmm. represent. The way that we look at um, um, structures of conjunction phrase right now is, uh, as you did in the beginning, tell us what the constituency of conjunction phrase is. But yeah. we don't think of the conjunction phrase as an agreed way. But I yeah. think one can only go to the um, process of the processing argument when you can, once you've made a hypothesis about what the structure is as a domain of agreement. Yeah. Or yeah. the structure of a participle as a domain uh, of agreement. And I think that, that that's a productive way to think about it rather than uh, first go to all the variables. Yeah. So you, I mean, one can just, sure, of course, to formulate whatever hypothesis you want, you want to work with one variety. But I don't think that the idea is, I mean, for a speaker, uh, for a Hindi speaker, um, who will do this test, it becomes immediately visible that you're not using just one strategy. Yeah. So that actually you need amount of theoretical abstraction to be able to address this. Yeah. Um, rather than looking to immediately populate the domain with, you know, a whole number of factors. Right. Yeah. Right. But so think of what, what does a conjunction phase agree with? And suppose yeah. you and then to test um, in areas where, so in Hindi, uh, the if you have a possessed down phase, so Ram hmm. ki or Sita ka pita, hmm. when you have a Q inside the noun phase, yeah, right, or you have an agreement domain inside the two conjuncts, does it get more um, complicated? So first one yeah. builds an account, one, one idea that the conjunction phrase, what kind of an Indian um, domain it is, an agreement domain it is. One way to go there. Right. Uh, and all alternative, you know, one looks at data like this. So looking at this data set now for the nth time in my life, I'm struck by the fact that we did not really ask the question, is what happens when I have to possess down phrases on joint? Yeah. And um, whether there is a difference uh, in the uh, <coughs> uh, conjunct agreement choices. So, Ram ke kutte or Sita ki bilia maidan. Is there a difference? Uh, Ram ki ma or Sita ka bap saath mein bhaag gaye. But Bhagai. <laughs> yeah. That is the only option. But mm -hmm. I mean like Ma and Bap and all that might mm -hmm. not uh, great. Uh, because they're unique in themselves. Yeah. You know, so they have some of the things. But mm -hmm. Ram ka so you it's a putta or uh many uh uh many eight larka or larki dekhi. How many people accept that? Fine for me. I, fine for me. Now, if we say Ram ka larka or Sita yes, ki it's mostly fine. Or what? Maine Ram ki, maine Ram ka larka or Sita ki ladki dekhi. Is that okay? Can you repeat that? Maine Ram ka larka or Sita ki ladki dekhi. That's also fine. That's also fine. Yeah. So I'm wondering whether if we can look at more or many achalarka and so you have noticed all these um, you know the fact that if it's modified, etc. Yeah. So that if, there, if there's more structure in the noun, yeah. there is more, then is there a, a difference? So I think what you said yeah. was I think the first step rather than going into regions and populations and all of that as you are interpreting variables. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, are there any more questions? Uh, if not, then Sakshi uh, has a Sakshi, if you could tell us a little bit about this uh, the paper, if you remember, so variable agreement and coordinate. 
you know if you read it uh, it's been a while since i read this but it's looking at the you know like at the kind of question that you're looking at uh, yeah. but the thing is like all of these people they uh, approached it more from a processing perspective and right. the question as well of you know this variability uh, what are you going to like are you going to uh, say that this is due to some cognitive factor or uh, impacting a perfect or a settled grammatical system or are you going to end up saying that the grammar is maybe not fully settled here right so yes. you're seeing that right so for subject position maybe it's a little bit more settled but when yes. you the object position there's more variability um so there's the yes. question of what exactly the grammar is contributing in the first place yeah and then you know we can ask a question of whether our cognitive factors are changing that to a higher degree so these people coming from psycholinguistics in that saying that it's uh, not an agreement error or not yeah. a cognitive issue of the kind that maybe i talked about in my previous talk right okay thank you so much this is a very useful yeah. Thank citation you. thanks it is <laughs> uh, yeah uh, so i think since there are not any more questions uh we can end at this note yes and so thank you rupor it was a really wonderful talk and uh, i hope you all learned something and uh, uh, yeah to everyone see you on the next zoom demic yeah. talk yeah. thank and you so much thank you for your judgments and thank you for your comments and thank you for listening yay yay it was a very Thanks. good talk very really nice sir. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye.